Hello everyone and welcome back to my 164th custom farm toy series. It's been a long time since I've had a video up because I've been really busy putting up the shed and building the shop. But I had a special request from a viewer and I've been itching to work on this thing lately. So we're going to work on it a little bit here and, and get his request met. Uh, this is my 7800 that I've been working on. You guys haven't seen this one yet, but I'll give you a quick run around of it. This is a front wheel assist model. And I had purchased the original front wheel assist tractor, so it's got the, the drive shaft to the front on it. I added a three-point hitch. This is a Moore's movable three-point hitch. This is the first one I've done of that, and uh, I thought it was going to be really difficult, but uh, it actually went pretty good. Uh, as you can see, as with all my models, I detail painted the inside. I painted the knobs and levers and put a more realistic steering wheel on it. I have to paint the roof yet. That's the original Ertl color, so... That's why that looks a bit different. Now, the wheels and tires on this are from Daryl Spangler. And uh, I would strongly recommend uh, looking into these wheels and tires if you're working on anything like this or even a new R-Series. Um, these are really sharp-looking wheels and tires. They look a little bit better than the standy rims like what I used on my other 7800. And uh, they just all around look real nice. And then the fenders on the front actually came off of like a MX-280. The John Deere's would typically have a rounded fender, and this one's kind of got the flat spots to it. But, you know, it's it's fairly common for farmers to kind of rig things. And so uh, the story behind this one is going to be that the farmer needed to put new fenders on it, and uh, he was able to find those ones, and uh, they were cheaper than going with the new John Deere ones, so that's what he put on it. I also added a Moore's steerable front axle kit. And once again, that I figured was going to be a little bit difficult, but it actually turned out really well, and uh, it wasn't too hard at all. So basically all I have left on this one is to paint the roof, add the cab glass, and then do the handrails. And I might put a mirror on this one, we'll see. But uh, and then this one will actually be going up for sale, I think. I'd love to keep all the tractors I build, but every once in a while you got to sell one so you can afford to build the next one. But uh, on to the next thing here. Uh, when I do my windows... I like to use this Plastruck product, and uh, I've heard that people use like uh, packing tape. They just cut pieces of packing tape and they stick it on the inside of the cab. But uh, I just, I mean, it works. It looks all right, and I've seen some that do look really nice. But uh, I just prefer to do it this way. So this is Plastruck Clear. It is .010 inches, and uh, it works really nice. You do have to be really careful not to scratch it. Uh, it scratches very easily. Uh, and if you look at up look at it up close, you can see the scratches. But uh, if you scratch it up a little bit, you can still use it. You just uh, from a distance, it looks fine. So I'll get set up here, and then I'll show you what I do to make the windows. So this can be kind of a guess and check process. Uh, I just kind of cut what I think is right, and then I just trim it down and trim it down and trim it down until it it fits. So what I have here is just a little piece of cardboard that I have my plastic laid out on, and a nice sharp hobby knife. And uh, I'll just start cutting pieces of the plastic and uh, or styrene, I guess, is what it is. Technically, is uh, clear styrene. I'll just start cutting pieces of that and then fit them in as I go. And then I use a clear window glue made by testers that I'll dig out here in a minute. And that's what I use to glue it in place. So here I've got my first piece cut out, and uh, then I'll start trimming it to fit. I obviously, as you can see here, I used this piece to make the other windows for the other 7800 I did. So I kind of had a little bit of, of previously cut stuff to base it off of. Um, to make this process easier, one thing that I've seen people do is to just cut big, bigger squares and put it on the inside of the cab. And I haven't tried that yet. I think it looks a lot more realistic if you do it this way. But uh, I'm sure it looks pretty good if you do it that way as well. The reason I haven't tried that yet is because I like to make I like to take my cabs in two halves and uh, glue them together. And it's hard to do this that way. It would work all right on the sides, but you'd have to you'd still have to cut the front windows and the back windows. So now I'm just gonna kind of fit it up and uh, see what needs to be trimmed. As you can see there, I kind of made this piece of hair sh too short, but but uh, the nice thing about that window glue I was telling you about is uh, it actually kind of, you can make a film with it, and uh, it 
you can't really tell the difference between that and the actual window and so if you're just a hair short on an area like that that glue is really nice because uh, you can just kind of fill it in with glue a little bit and it looks just like it, it uh, had the window there This process can definitely be frustrating, and there's a lot of times when I I cut a piece and then I'm trimming it to fit, and I cut it just a little bit too much, like this piece right here I won't be able to use. And so there's a lot of uh, cutting pieces, realizing they're not going to work, and then throwing them away, or like this piece I'll be able to use on this side instead, or I'll be able to make one of these small front windows out of it. So it's a lot of trial and error, but... Uh, you know, I guess it's worth it in the end. All right, so here's the other 7800 that I made, and I just wanted to show you a finished product because I'm not going to have this other one finished tonight or by the time I want to have this video up. But uh, the back window on this one was the one that definitely turned out the best, and you can see that you know it, it looks pretty good up close, and it uh, definitely looks good from a distance. But uh, this is kind of what the end result is that I'm shooting for. And like I was saying, you know, this stuff is scratched a little bit, but you can't really see it all that much. And uh, it really, really sets this tractor apart just from not having the window glass in it. I mean, if you put these two tractors next to each other, they're both essentially finished. And just the look of the one with the glass in it compared to the one without is phenomenal. So uh, I'll keep going on that and uh, see if I can't get the whole thing finished here. But... That's, the, that's just how I make my windows. Like I said, there's other ways to do it, but uh, this is the way that I've found looks the best. So if you have any questions, uh, uh, go ahead and throw them in the comments or anything like that. Or just you know make a comment if you liked it or if you think there's something I should do different. And make sure you like the video and subscribe. And if you haven't been watching my Around the Farm series and want to check up on the process that I've got on the shop, uh, go ahead and swing over to that playlist and check those out. And uh, like I said on that episode, or those those series, is I, I really like the likes. Keep the likes coming on the stuff that you really do like because that uh, that tells me what I should be doing as a producer and uh, putting videos out there that you guys actually want to watch. So make sure you keep the likes coming on the videos that you like. And if there's something you really liked about them, throw it in the comments, and I'll try and do that more often. But thanks for watching.